Hello there, my name is James and welcome to yet another generically generic top 10 list. I'm still in a bit of a chill mood after my last top 10 on Skies and video games, so I thought to myself, why not make a top 10 about those soothing, peaceful and relaxing games that help us calm the nerves. That's a good idea, but let's squeeze the lemon, season some bitterness and look at the games that I found peaceful but irritating. Whether it was major difficulty or just plain boring, these are my top 10 irritating peaceful games. I do my last year. Best to start off with some easy targets, and for number 10 we've got Sega Bass Fishing. I don't know about you, but I kind of find fishing to be a relaxing sport. Sitting in a boat, by the shore, standing by the docks, waiting for a fish to take a bite on ye bait and reel it in before the line snaps. I knew someone from long ago that always took joy in catching fishies and hey, I had my fair share of fishing back in my younger years. So the thing with real life fishing is that you're outside, breathing in the fresh air, chilling with a lovely atmosphere and maybe a few drinks in the esky. That was pure Australian language right there. And when it comes to the video game world for Sega Bass Fishing, I'm sitting in my room, waiting for an AI fish to grab on the hook and start going nuts on my controller to bring it ashore. Why fish when you have a video game for it? Quite simply, it's not the real thing, and where there's fantastical worlds created in this industry, I could just go to them for my entertainment. Bunnies! I love bunnies. Rabbits have been in my backyard for quite some time, the breeders they are. One day at a game store I came across bunnies and decided why the hell not for its very cheap price. So along with other pieces of trash from my game collection, this was one I was kind of interested in playing. Till I saw the Ubisoft logo. I'll be straight with you, bunnies is exactly what you would think. Keeping a rabbit as your pet, nurturing it, feeding it, cleaning it, teaching it to talk, you know, the normal attributes of taking care of bunnies. What? Yes, you do teach it to speak, that's correct. Bunnies is a cute game, very relaxing when you have nothing else to do and want to lose a few hours. It may be no Tamagotchi or this woman house thing. It's alright. The thing is that the repetition shows very quickly. I don't mean by nurturing entirely, but this one concept. Considering you teach this rabbit words, the minigame every time is to pop the letters of the word in order till it learns the word. This mechanic happens so much that my good arm grows tired of holding the stylus and popping bubbles, and just stops me from playing it all together. Bunny lovers and kitties will like this one, just keep in mind. Oh, oh my god, I realized something. THERE'S A TALKING RABBIT, HOLY CRAP! Treasures of the Deep is technically not a peaceful game, it's rather intense and thrilling. For me, I found it to be a relaxing tone from the depths below, especially when netting up manta rays and blowing up subs with missiles. Don't judge me, it's just a game, yo. Reasonably so, I put this on the list because not only did I need another easy target, and the fact that not too many people probably know of this hidden gem, but for me personally, I find a peacefully elegant charm to it. But god damn is it hard as nails. The ocean is out to get me and I need more than a pack of missiles. This choice might sift some people. Croc! Legend of the Gobbos. Let me lay this down for you so you can understand. I wouldn't necessarily call Croc a peaceful game. There's some major difficult platforming later on in the levels, the controls aren't the greatest in the gaming world, and there'll be times of pain when you fall down a hole for the 70th time. That kind of hinders my gaming experience of Croc. Aside from that though, the charming levels, the various colours, the bounciness of the characters, music and bonus round jelly, and the calm vibe as I play through deliver such a peaceful night of gaming for me. Although I may sigh and groan from a nice level, there will be a fun jungle level in the long run. A bit odd to be here, but I think I needed to put my 50-50 cents on the table. I love Croc, but I hate it too.
At number 6 is a Sega Mega Drive classic, Echo the Dolphin. I swear this is the last game to do with the ocean on my list. I don't know why I find the ocean calming when I know it's a treacherous hazard of deadly sea creatures, ghastly weathers and very... open. I hardly swim in the godforsaken waters because of those things, but looking from another perspective seems fine by me. So yeah, Echo the Dolphin. I'm not necessarily fond of the game, but I enjoy it nevertheless. There's an audacious vibrancy within the ocean, the pixels from the screen gleam in my eyes, and the music is some of the most meditative Sega Mega Drive music I've ever heard since Streets of Rage. Soaring through the deep blue is great and I could literally swim through the opening for ages and not be tired of it. But as soon as Echo jumps out of the water real high, this bizarreness happens and the adventure begins. The ocean will be out to get this poor dolphin that lost his dolphin friends and the difficulty is true Sega Mega Drive fashion. Hard and requires a lot of retries. That's plainly why it's on the list. It's hard and can feel painful surviving through a single level, but there's still the other elements that make up for it. And hey, Echo the Dolphin wouldn't be what it is today if they didn't spice up the hardness. Lost in underrated waters. Oh, Connectimals. Goody, goody, yum, yum. Another creature nurturing game, only this time you gotta touch the air and imagine petting these tigers and doing minigame stuff. If you played or watched Connectimals before, you must know why this calming game kicked my shins with annoyance. No, not the fact that this is all motion control. Not at all. I'm referring to this blaster thing. Welcome to my home. Or rather, the home of... Captain Abel Blackwood, greatest pirate the world has never known. A fairy ferret that talks to me like one of the people that you don't want being two meters near. His wacky, stupid voice and presence alone is aggravating to the skin. He's not the only problem, the game is boring as well. There's no sense of soothing progression and bondage between me and the adorable animal of my choosing. I swear on Jupiter that I nearly fell asleep playing this game. If not for that annoying ferret, I'd have been dead asleep in my chair. Bastard ferret, I wouldn't mind a nap, you know? Entwined, a lovely game where an orange origami fish and a blue origami bird go through rings apart from each other to form into a big, luscious green origami dragon. Yeah, enough said. Entwined puts me in a trance as I play it, the elevating score with absolute finesse and a delectable visual sight to behold. I enjoy the game very much, but there is one thing that I'll solely grant as my fault. When you go through rings, it becomes trickier with needing a precise movement. The orange fish is controlled by the left stick and the blue bird on the right. Very simple. The point is, you remember the term butterfingers? Not the candy bar, the term of slippery fingers, but change fingers to thumbs. I have butter thumbs whenever I have to be slab dab on the dot of things. Again, it's personally my fault that this game is on my list. It doesn't have your name on the title now, does it? So I'll blame myself, but I do want to point out the challenge mode in Entwined. My word. They really excelled that word, alright. Remember Team 17, the developers behind Worms? I most certainly do. Worms, Armageddon, and World Party were some of my go-to games when I was younger. So when I heard about their most recent title, Beyond Dies, I was quite excited to give it a try after glimpsing a peek at the watercolour painting visuals and interesting small tale. I gave it a shot, and while I can say I adore its deep and thoughtful children book S style, the beautifully simple story of a blind girl searching for a cat friend, and the way it plays with imagery using audio, one major aspect kept on wanting me to pull out of this world. The slow pacing of walking about the area. Okay, before you lose your breakfast, lunch or dinner, hear me out. Yes, I do know she is blind. That she would need to take her time just in case she tread on the wrong step, injuring herself. And I applaud her progression without the use of a cane, honestly. I can't even make it from my bed to the toilet amidst the dark of the night. But as you uncover the world in each chapter slowly and willingly, the patience starts to slip when there's a fork in the road and the backtracking begins with each slow step. 
It gets to a point where each footstep becomes stomps of annoyance and painting up a line of invisible walls begin to aggravate the soul. I can deal with walking style games, but not this slow. I think maybe if she picked her pace up a notch could have helped my experience a bit more. What would have been cool was to be able to see her jog through the sections she coloured, which would be good remembering I'll admit. I don't hate Beyond Eyes, but that mechanic alone stops me from wanting to play it again. Anyone remember Flower? I most certainly do. I was in a phase where I loved it, then I despised it, then going back to loving it again. I'll probably hate it in a few months. Reason I bring Flower up is not because it's on the list, but the control side of things. In Flower, you have to become the wind, or essence of the flowers as I like to call it, to move a petal that absorbs other petals from flowers to bloom the flowers and move around plain valleys to bring life into the world. Did you get that? Didn't really need to. Anyway, the way you move is by tilting the controller itself for full motion movement instead of using the analog sticks. Before flower, there was flow. And no, that is not an ocean, it's an aquatic environment. Flow is a game where you play as aquatic microorganisms that look like worms, jellyfish and dolphins that consume other microorganisms to evolve. As you evolve, you proceed down deeper into the depths below and consume more, whilst facing against other microorganisms that put you straight on the most wanted food chain list. That's it. It's simple, stunning and I like it. For about an hour. After the hour, my wrists begin to feel sore due to the fact that you got to sway the controller about in order to move. Unlike Flower where swooshing through the place was slick and at ease with little wrist aching in the process, in Flow, trying to munch on other microorganisms and rapidly tilting pulling backwards not only painful to accomplish in the game, but is a pain to my wrists. If there was an option to move about with the analog sticks, which would have been a better preferable choice, I wouldn't have minded. Flow is neat for what it is, but motion control is what nearly kills it for me. Proteus. I didn't get it. Proteus is a game with no goals and no story whatsoever. I wake up on an island and walk, look around, walk, and look at little things that react. Sort of. Wondering what to do, the night falls and glow stars appear. I then follow the glow stars that transform a whirl of multiple stars that skip seasons and still don't understand. I walked around the island and the only harm I came towards was a swarm of bumblebees that only made me faster for a bit. Questions popped up. Is this a game? Is this all there is? What am I supposed to be getting out of this experience? Is there something I'm not understanding? Is there a lore behind this island with the graveyard and stones? Am I the only one thinking that? I played Proteus five times and got absolutely nothing out of it. I was liking the odd and weird island I lurked around, but I must have missed the point. Then I chucked all those questions away and came up with an answer. The game wasn't for me. I realised that someone else in the world probably created their own story in Proteus or began living Proteus to a point where they understood. For others it'd be a safe spot, away from reality we live in. That's a personal thought of mine, and that's why I found it to be an irritatingly peaceful game. I was in that world with a fresh gaze and I felt empty afterwards, as if I wasted time. Try out Proteus if you can and see what you get out of it. And those were my most irritating peaceful games. Thanks for dropping by and give me your most irritating peaceful games that you've ever played down in the comments below. Now, as always, my name is James and you'll expect more top 10s in the near future. That's kind of it. Bye bye.